Coming up next on the SPNN Forum, we have Chad Campy, founder and operator of Flip Phone Events, and Sasha Cassidyne, a drag performer. Hi, I'm Martin Ludden, Executive Director of the St. Paul Neighborhood Network, and we are here in the Kwame McDonald studio at SPNN with Chad Campy and Sasha Cassidyne. Chad, Sasha, welcome to the forum. Thank you. Um, it's great to have you. Uh, Chad, you are founder, owner, of uh, operator of Flip Phone Events. Can you tell us a little bit about what yeah. Flip Phone is yeah. and what you do? Yeah, so Flip Phone started in 2012. I was actually a teacher at the time, teaching at the Friends School of Minnesota, yeah. which I was, heard was on here last <laughs> yeah, we week. we just taped them. Uh, yeah. And one of my dear friends actually passed away. Uh, I worked at a summer program with him, with him uh, for eight, eighth and ninth graders at Wellesley College. And we loved Mariah Carey, we loved uh, 90s music, so I wanted to do something to sort of remember him and honor him. And so I woke up one morning and saying, I want to put on a party. So one of my friend's friends, um, uh, family members ran, ran Honey, which was yeah. in Northeast uh, Minneapolis. Yeah, it was below, it was the Times? Yep. And um, what is it now? Now it's Jet Set, okay. like Queer Bar. <laughs> uh, and I emailed them and I said, I want to DJ. And yeah. he was like, okay, sure. <laughs> he gave me a Wednesday night. Nice. Uh, we got about 75 people, $3 cover, and that's where it started. And slowly we started adding drag performers. I remember yeah. the first uh, sold out event, we did a Robin theme night, and there was lines <laughs> around the block. <laughs> and it became a hot party once a month. Yeah. And then from there, I, I, a huge Dolly Parton fan, and I always wanted to do a Dolly Parton event, but I was like, that may not work as a nighttime event. Right. And so then I was like, we should maybe try a brunch. So I contacted a restaurant. We did a brunch, and that sold out. Well, there were there weren't really any drag brunches going on yeah. in the Twin Cities. And then we hopped around a few places. We went to the Union Rooftop, and we've been there now seven years. And we oh. now do uh, six shows a weekend in Minneapolis alone, wow. with about fifteen hundred people coming. Wow! Each weekend. That is a ton and of people. Sasha is our the queen mother of Flip Phone, the host of Flip Phone. Yeah, I wanted to, I want to come back to the fifteen hundred people, but first <laughs> let's introduce <laughs> Sasha. Um, so you've been a drag performer for how long? Seventeen long oh. years. Yes, <laughs> long and successful years, though it sounds yeah, like. Yeah. yeah, I'll say like ten of my drag years were really successful. Moving here, cool. it's been really, really great for is me. Is that the drag. most recent ten? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> like really, really successful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you say you're the queen mother of flip phone. So what does that, um, as, a, as a host, what does that look like? What does a drag brunch or a, a flip phone drag party look like? So yeah, we do three shows a day. They're two hour themed. So Sasha is the one who sort of invites everybody into the space, mm -hmm. introduces the performers, picks the performers, make sure they're on theme. Yeah. Sort of, since I can't be at every brunch, make sure yeah. everything's going great there. Mm -hmm. And then she also, does, she takes the mother role seriously. <laughs> oh God, yeah. <laughs> so what does that mean? Like how are you, how do you kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, curate that space? I have to deal with like all kinds of like egos, because working with queens yeah. and, and kings, you get a lot of divas and divos. Yeah. So like we have to work with a lot of egos most of the time and also making sure the guests are having a good time yeah. I have to like sometimes you asked me earlier about singing yeah yeah I sing sometimes <laughs> over the tracks anything to keep them hype and having a good time at yeah. drag brunch is mainly my thing I just want you to feel at home yeah yeah just feel at home and have yeah. a good time yeah like we having cool. a party in your living room yeah <laughs> and I would say that the mother part that you have can you explain to sort of what a drag family family is and I would say you have your drag family that you you oversee and work wonderful oh, with yeah, him, but I would say yeah. the majority of the Twin City drag performers are part of your drag family too. Yeah, in their own way. <laughs> they look at me because, I mean, being an older, I can say now that I'm a, a more older queen. I'm in my mid-40s now yeah. at this point. Um, I come with a lot of wisdom throughout the years, right. whether good or bad, and I don't mind passing that around. Yeah. And showing people that no matter what you do in drag, you just got to have a good time. It, don't take it too serious. And if you're trying to make money from it, yeah. don't go to it for that reason. Because <laughs> everybody's not going to strike gold, right. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> it's very expensive. It is very yeah. expensive. I hadn't considered that. I imagine, you know, the 
the accessories and costumes it takes oh to be a good goodness. drag performer yes. are not cheap. Oh, yes. I, I spend, I think, to be honest, probably maybe like $2,000 a month sometimes. Holy huh? Yeah. 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 And especially That's an with, investment. Yeah. with the popularity of RuPaul's Drag Race. It that, that grew has. it, yeah. So when we started, um, Drag Race was just beginning. Mm -hmm. And there were not actually that many drag performers in the Twin Cities. What was it like, season three, four? Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what. Yeah, they were. yeah. Um, but it wasn't as there were not. We, the, finding drag performers was difficult mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. You could probably count on your hand, or probably mm -hmm. maybe twenty active Twin Cities that were really good. Yeah, yeah. and bookable. And now, time. how many drag performers would you say? <laughs> like what, hundreds? <laughs> yeah, two to three hundred. Yeah, yeah. That's huge Twins. growth. Yeah. Um, so that was that's one change. You know, uh, RuPaul, I suppose, kind of brought that more to the mainstream. Mm -hmm. What else have you seen change? I mean, you've been doing this seventeen years. You've been doing it twelve. I, I've seen like a lot of good that comes out of the, like, especially starting out like back before there was a drag race. Mm -hmm. Like financially, I've been lucky enough to make a living from drag, and also being exposed, like getting to have exposure in different places, yeah. like the Mall of America. Um, I've done things for like one of the Vikings' wives before. Like, yeah. So thanks to Drag Race, I'm able to do a lot of mainstream things with my drag. But there is also a flip side. Um, it's brought a lot of attention to it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. You know, um, them, like media is like directly pointing out all of the bad things about drag that they think they know about. But right. it's not, it's just, I think Chad pointed out, like just like there's bad movies, there are bad drag shows that are probably Inappropriate. Not even bad necessarily, yeah. but no, like, yeah, not all for ages. a certain age, yeah. certain age. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what's happened now that it's yeah. getting a little bad press because it's so exposed now. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that has changed about it. Yeah. 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 In many of the states, a lot of people are equating and saying that drag shows are not for kids, mm -hmm. uh, which first off is a parental choice. I think right. every parent knows their kids better mm -hmm. than the government <laughs> knows their kids, yep. I would hope. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, every drag show, it's like going to a musical, if a musical's in town, or a play, or an mm -hmm. art exhibit, you know going in that, oh yes, maybe a Disney drag show is great for all my age families, right. but um, maybe like a Cardi B drag show is it's not, not somewhere <laughs> where I'm gonna bring my five-year-old. <laughs> right. And so I think that's just, I think there's just a lot of miscommunication and a lot of clips of somebody taking those and saying this is not for my right. children. And then I think right now the Republican Party is using this sort of as a, a big piece to get people uh, to come out to vote. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, my mother was telling me that she read this whole study where they, they took different issues to see what people would be about and drag for underage was one. And I think that the bottom line too is how it affects ultimately the trans community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of these laws are right. stemming from in places that are coming up. And if you're uh, familiar with uh, Tennessee, mm -hmm. they just uh, made it illegal basically to do drag in public, yeah. but it's on pause now. Florida just did it. But ultimately, drag performers, they'll figure it out. But I think it's people who are trans who are living day to day mm -hmm. that it's the worst for. Yeah. yeah, because I think they're using the drag to hide the fact that they are going after a lot of trans rights and yeah. laws. Drag is just a distraction. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. it's not harming anyone. Really. Yeah. But like if you say like, oh, you can't wear makeup in the daytime and you can't do this. If you don't respect someone's gender and they're walking around in makeup or something, then they just did something that's against the law right. easily. Yeah. So it affects them. I think it affects trans people a lot more than it will affect us queens because right. we'll figure it out. Right. Yeah. And you can put your drag and put it in the mm -hmm. box and the people who are trans day to day. Yeah. Um, you, you brought up recently that like Columbus this past yeah. week, uh, there was a group of uh, neo-Nazis came and protested out of nowhere. At a brunch. So I yeah. think that the government, by making these laws, it's creating so much extra right. violence and things yeah. that should not be. About a year from now, a year ago, none of these issues were coming up. People yeah. do drag, yeah. and it was not an issue. Mm -hmm. You so you mentioned um, Tennessee, and so you're based here in Minneapolis, both of you, mm -hmm. uh, but you operate nationally. Yeah, flip phone events. We're in eight different cities: yeah. uh, New York, Chicago, Boston, Palm Springs, Phoenix, Nashville, Fort Lauderdale. Okay. And every weekend we have shows and we have, there's a Sasha in every city and there's actually a great, <laughs> you have a great network with all yeah, the hosts yeah, too, which really is good. wonderful. 
but yeah, even in, in I would say definitely in the red states, we're mm -hmm. seeing less people are purchasing tickets for mm -hmm. drag shows. Give it, I don't know if they're nervous to go to drag right. shows because, I mean, perp I, if. Well, I would be nervous if I saw the Proud Boys yeah. come with AK 47s yeah. right. to a drag brunch where there were children also inside. Yeah. And it's like, what are you really afraid of exposing them right. to? If yeah. I was a kid, I would be afraid of walking out. And seeing all these, you know, adults standing out with guns, right? And not the yeah. drag queen who yeah. is performing the greatest yeah. show. This right. is me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just such a weird way how it yeah. sort of shows. Luckily, in Minnesota, we have not had many issues yet, but there's definitely outside of the city areas yeah. people who are nervous about this. Yeah. If you're just joining us, we are here on the SPNN Forum with Sasha Cassidyne and Chad Campy of Flip Phone, Production, Flip Phone Events. Um, Chad, you mentioned laws in uh, both Florida and Tennessee, places you operate. How does that impact what you do? Yeah, one of our, um, one of our partner restaurants just actually called me on the way here and saying, oh, you have a Mario themed, we're getting letters because they think when there's anything kid Mm -hmm. Focused, they think people are like, I can't believe. Super Mario Brothers came out in like 1986. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's my childhood. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia yeah. Yeah. for it. And granted, the shows um, in most of our locations, some places it's yeah. 21 based on the venue, but most right. of them are all ages, and we let it for the parents mm -hmm. to decide. Yeah. If it's a show that we know had some obscene things in it, one of us will come and say, hey, to the parents, do you know that this music, and then the, most of the times the parents are like, we listen to this music all the time at home, yeah. and our kid knows <laughs> when to say these words or when right. not to say these well, words. I know usually when we put together themes here, I'll speak for myself as a show director here, I try to make sure I let them know, like, this is more of a child-centered theme. Right. We have to make sure we keep the music light. Yeah. You know, we don't need to put colorful music in this one. Right. We're, we're very mindful of yeah. our audience, too, so they're not giving us credit also for being mindful of that stuff. <laughs> we care, too. Yeah. I have nieces and nephews. Right. And if you, <laughs> if you see the joy in a child's face mm -hmm. when they yeah. are waiting to give a dollar to a performer, mm -hmm. yeah. it is like the most pure, innocent, Thing. Encanto was so beautiful. That was a really good brunch we had. Say a little bit more about that. Cause that's, I mean, the show, like the movie itself. It was huge. We had so like, many yeah. themes through it, mm -hmm. and to do that as a drag, a drag brunch. I mean, also. we went all out. We had the costume. I was yeah. Louisa. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> was, was the house. Not, someone was the house, <laughs> uh, and we had Bruno. Like they and the performers yeah. go off. They love it just as yeah. much. But when we see the kids enjoy it. We put so much more into it. Yeah. Because to me, we're exposing them to things that we weren't. I'm an 80s baby. Yeah. And I grew up in the South. I was not exposed to being, or, or to having my creative freedom. I was not right. allowed to do that. Yeah. And I'm not saying that my parents were bad. They taught me the way that they were brought up. Yep. And so I think Queens now, when kids see us, it just allows them to have bigger and broader imaginations. They can turn into all different kinds of things, advertisement, movie producers. Like, they just got to open their mind and see the beauty of drag. Yeah. It's not hurting anyone. Well, and kids respond to, like, kids respond more purely, I think. You know, adult, we all have baggage. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, I can't be super excited and kind of lose my mind over this cool thing I'm seeing mm -hmm. because I'm an adult and I have to be an adult about mm -hmm. it. Um, but kids are free to, like, if something's that cool, they will show you. And we also have kids who come week after week for mm -hmm. our kids. I, there's one kid, John, and his um, uh, parent come to every yeah, performer, and uh, especially yeah, especially uh, kids who are not gender conforming. Yeah. This is a life changing situation right. for them to see other adults maybe mm -hmm. wear a dress, maybe yeah. put on some makeup, or maybe do something that they may want to do that they're not as comfortable with that mm -hmm. drag. Yeah. allows them to and it's just so crazy to me that a piece of fabric like a dress right. causes so much so many like, issues like yeah. who created yeah. the dress like or like makeup why is that even. <laughs> yeah. it's like why does this cause so many right. issues it's, yeah and so working with some of the restaurant mm -hmm. operators they get nervous when they see the proud boys or see people yep. protesting so it's been quite the line between the different and so far every one of them had been great and not backing down yeah. from it because then the those people protesting are winning right well and um, they understand what is and isn't happening inside their establishment right. and so i think it's it's just a really different time in drag now mm -hmm. than it ever has mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. um, and i think we're going to continue to see this play through the election 
Oh, yeah, for sure. Probably a little after. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think sure. it's definitely gonna get hotter. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then we're, we're, it's not. We're not at the end of the woods yet. That's no, a that's no. a long time now. Yeah. Yeah. We're well, not gonna give into it though. Right. Not at all. <laughs> but I think some performers like our host in Natural. It's definitely affecting their livelihood. Mm -hmm and their business and other performers you've talked to in some of the states that when less people come to the show, there's less money that everybody's mm -hmm. making yep. and it's harder to pay your mortgage. It's just a sort of a, a domino effect for the queer. I, livelihood resonates, of course, but also you know, you're talking about potential like actual physical and legal risks. Mm -hmm. So how does, that, like, how does that impact what you're doing? Both from like a, a promotion and like organizing right. point of view, and also as a performer. I mean, it make, it makes you scared because some of them, well, uh, me, I've been doing it for years yeah. uh, and been able to make a living off of it. So I know, like, for them who've been doing it so long down there, you know, Jaden told me like there are venues that are literally afraid to have the shows that they've been having the shows for years with now mm -hmm. because they don't want the backlash. They're worried yeah. about any kind of legal fines or, or ramifications right. they could possibly get. So it just puts them in a place of, what do I do next? Yeah. You know, I'm lost. If I can't do drag, then I have to go back to work. I haven't been at a regular job in five or right. six years. My resume doesn't look too hot, and yeah. we all know how that goes. Like, it's hard, it's tough, and it's, I appreciate what we're doing now is having a conversation about these things mm -hmm. so that we can break down some of these awful stigmas about right. all of this stuff. So we can have some fun. That's yeah. all it is. It's tell, like lighting up. Tell them uh, your, your line about the grooming. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> you I, say this I, in every I, show. I brought this with. line because I've, I've heard it so many times that drag queens are groomers and groomers. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give in to you. You are absolutely right. But make sure you let them know the only thing we're interested in grooming is our hair, our makeup, and our costumes. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you let them know. Yeah. I'm thinking about getting me a shirt made. <laughs> That's all the time I have That's to literally do that. it. I don't have time to raise yeah. your children. I'm sorry. <laughs> and honestly, like working with drag queens, they enjoy kids being there, but I've never met a drag queen who no, like, yeah. wants to be with kids all <laughs> right. the time. No. Which is so crazy to me yeah. for these people that most of these drag performers that's not their goal. Right. So no. it's crazy of whoever, where this yeah. came from. And I think this just comes from whenever there's different types of people, yeah. people create fake stories and then people buy into right. it. And we've seen this time again throughout history yeah. with everything. That they're thinking, oh, we're forcing it. No, we're not forcing it. Half of the time, if I see a kid in the audience and we're doing like something that rapish or something like that, I tend to like, okay, I'm not going to go over here and perform in front of this child. Yeah. Right. I'm going to walk away. Like most queens are really mindful of that. Yeah. So it's like they're not giving it enough credit to know that, that right. we are very mindful, mindful and respectful right. of people's children. But you don't have to bring your children. No, no. that's like the only thing. Yeah. No one is forcing you. <laughs> came to a drag show. Yeah, you might understand that. Yeah, you don't have to bring your children. And honestly, okay. turning on news is a lot scarier. Yeah, I don't even watch to even any anymore. of the drag shows. That yeah. Oh my more goodness! Yeah, things that yeah. would be traumatic. For we children. always, my ten-year-old is like addicted to uh, NPR. Okay. And so the drive to school is, can we listen to the news? It's like, no, not today. <laughs> like, no, we're going to listen to music today. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my yeah. nieces and nephews are like that about the news and yeah. asking me questions about different things. And it's like, I didn't grow up like that. So it's hard explaining yeah. to them. Like, you know, we were talking about gun drills. They were yeah. talking to me about that the other day. And I'm like, you actually practice a gun drill every single day? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, not every single day, but we have to practice at least a few times a month. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. And we're talking about drag. There's so many other yeah. issues. <laughs> yeah. It this surprises me. Um, how how did you both come to drag? What was yeah, you know, what was that like <laughs> what was that exposure and how did it come around? I've always been a fan of drag. I went to McAllister yeah. College in St. Paul, so we would go to the townhouse oh, yeah. um, <laughs> in the early two thousands and I, I fell in love. I went to the nineties. Yeah in the early 2000s, and I, I always enjoyed it as a customer, so I thought it would be a great way to um, bring something different into our, our parties when we started, and mm -hmm. at that time, drag performers were only at the drag bars. You yeah. did not see them at a straight bar or any other places, so mm -hmm. I was sort of, it was kind of, I would ask performers, do you want to come here and yeah. do this? At first they would be like, what, outside of it? <laughs> yeah. And it worked. Um, it was a little first, people were like, what's going on? And then we really 
we really like to train our, our audience how to respect and tip the performers, and we started early by doing mm -hmm. that. And at first it was the gig, and you can talk about this, that no one wanted to take, and then it became the gig that everybody, everybody wanted, wanted to take. Yeah. You gotta explain how that, yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. definitely how <laughs> because I, I remember meeting you and, and doing a First Avenue show. No, not First Avenue, Honey. But Honey. Yeah. And I had to do like a Missy Elliott event. And he was like, oh, the pay is not gonna be this, but you know, and I'm like, well, I make this here, so yeah, I'm gonna try this. And yeah. all of the queens were like, oh, I can't believe you're gonna do that, you're not gonna make that many tips. Actually, I made a whole lot of tips there. <laughs> and I only got, I think it was like $60, $50, $60 to yeah. show pay. <laughs> because, yeah, we yeah, were charging $3 hooked. at the door. Yeah. yeah, I was addicted. And I was like the only queen. I think it was me and one other queen. Nice. And we were like making, it was really, Because you really would be good. the only performer of the night. Yeah. Because yeah, you couldn't so, get... Yeah. And we didn't want that many, and so, so other drag shows would have 15 performers, yeah. and so then it would be yeah. split. So whenever you went out after your numbers, everybody was buying drinks and tipping you. That and it was, was like, unheard of. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm the only person performing. Yeah. Of course I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and Sasha, how did you come to drag? Because you've been doing this longer than Chad has. Yeah, well, I came to drag through a small tragedy in my life. You know, I was diagnosed with HIV uh, March 2008 with my partner. Um, and I kind of made this like crazy little bucket list in my mind of things that I needed to do. Yeah. And drag was one of them. And again, I told you, I had a boyfriend who did drag and he would ruined his career. <laughs> he lost the pageant and went crazy backstage. And I <laughs> was like, I would never do that Show if I was a queen. Style. Yeah, it was, it was madness. Yeah. I was so upset with him, I was embarrassed. But I was like, if I ever got the opportunity, I would not do this. So I did a few talent nights, won all of them got on the main stage and I just never looked back. Nice. Like drag literally like, it was like rehab for me. It restored me, it made yeah. me feel human again and it just gave me a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of an excuse to feel and spread joy, mm -hmm. it seems. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to share how you got your last name and sort of drag families? And how oh, my last name, Tanisha, so Tanisha Cassidine, the rest of she passed away. Um, she was a trans woman in our community. At first she was like a drag queen. When I first saw her, I was terrified of drag queens when yeah. I first came out. She was tall and had these big hands. And, but when I watched her like on stage and like how everyone was like just captured by her, yeah. I like completely fell in love. So fast forward a few years, I got into pageants. Um, this is after me doing drag on my own, ran across her again and asked her to be my drag mom. And she was like, yeah, sure. I love you. You've always yeah. you know, been up and up in the community. And I really appreciate you. And my first name, Sasha, is from Beyonce. Her alternate ego, Sasha Fierce. Yep. <laughs> nice. She'd be very proud of you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tanisha would be proud of what yeah. I've made out of our last name. Yeah. I have my own drag children. Yeah. We have, like, thing, we do things together, shows, yeah. like, all kinds of stuff together. I so you, you talk about drag families. Like, the drag mom is kind of like the mentor. Mm -hmm. And you're helping folks navigate mm -hmm. the scene and get work and mm -hmm. do talk that. about personal issues because yeah. I have trans children, you know, who talk to me about different issues in and, the community and what they go through. And tell them when they don't look right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest. Because yeah. nope. my mother was honest to me, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it helped. Though. You don't yeah. sugarcoat. No. Um, if folks want to go out and catch a drag show, what's um, I think there's some kind of always on stuff, and then yeah. there's some special stuff coming yeah. up too. Yeah, so every Saturday, uh, if you want to see Sasha at Union, we have shows at 10, 12, 30, and 3. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on Sundays, we have 10, 12, 30, and 3. At Crave, during the winter, we're inside. Mm -hmm. When it's nice out, we're on the rooftop. And they are the most fun. People get addicted to mm -hmm. them. They're party brunches, and they <laughs> yeah. are all different themes. And we have things coming up from Prince to Taylor Swift to Disney villains. <laughs> uh, and you can go to flipphoneevents.com to see that. So that's the yeah. the every weekend thing. And then we have lots of one-off events. Uh, Pride is coming, and we have a very busy schedule. We're uh, doing a drag uh, show all ages at the First Avenue main room. Nice. And so that is on the 25th at uh, 11 a.m. 25th of June? June, cool. yep. And then we have um, parade viewing parties. We're bringing, if you like RuPaul's Drag Race, we're bringing the top four from the season coming there. We have a big uh, adults party at First Ave that evening. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lots of things <laughs> going on. If you look at our calendar, we stay booked and oh, busy. Oh, yeah. yeah, booked and busy, always. Yeah, it's a good way to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have probably have about six to eight shows every week. Yeah, usually, wow. yeah. 
that is busy. Yeah. <laughs> and blessed. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> well put. Um, Chad and Sasha, thanks for your time. Um, thanks for joining us here on the forum, and thanks for. Um, talking about this community and how it works. Thank you. I uh, really you. appreciate it. And come out, the biggest thing you can do right now is go out and support a show. Yeah. Um, any of the shows in the Twin Cities, we have wonderful places, Lush, uh, Roxy's, Gay 90s, Saloon, uh, the library does drag story hours. So if you see drag, just go out and support it. Yeah. We have been here in the Kwame McDonald studio at SPNN with Chad Campy and Sasha Cassidine. Thanks for watching and come see us again soon.